we are going to go over four examples of how we can use the alternating series test to show if a series converges or not. This is the first one. We have 1 over 3 minus 1 over 7 plus 1 over 11 minus 1 over 15 and so on. First, let's put this into the sigma notation form. So we look at this and let's say when n starts with 1 to infinity. Now, this is alternating and it starts with positive and a negative, positive and negative and so on. And we start with n equals 1. In that case, we need a factor negative 1 raised to the n minus 1 power. And then the rest is just 1 on the top over 3, 7, 11, 15. Each every time it goes up by 4. And this is a arithmetic sequence. The 4, the common difference, is the coefficient of n. Now, when n equals 1, 4 times 1 is 4. How can we get to 3? The answer is we need a minus 1. And that's how you can come up with a formula for this series. Okay, this is alternating. We have this. This right here is the BM portion, right? The non negative part. There are two things that we have to check in order to see if this right here converges or not. The first thing that we check is that if we take the limit as n goes to infinity of just the bn, do we get 0 or not? So we are looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of that. Well, if we put infinity to here, the bottom is infinity. 1 over infinity, we do end up with 0. So that checks. Now, secondly, we will have to make sure that if bn plus 1 is less than or equal to bn, in another word, bn has to be a decreasing sequence. I don't know yet, let me put down a question mark. For bn plus 1, we put the n plus 1 into this n here. So we have 1 over 4 times n plus 1, and after that, we have minus 1. Is this less than or equal to? Let's put down bn. Hmm. So how do we do it? And we have to make sure that this is true for n greater than or equal to 1 because n goes from 1 to infinity. So right here, you can just cross multiply, work things out. This right here is really just 4n plus 4 minus 1, which is 4n plus 3. And it's quite clear because they both have one on the top. This denominator is bigger than that denominator. So that means this fraction is less than that fraction. Or if you would like, you can cross multiply. You can do this times this, this times that. Everything is positive. So this times this is 4n plus 1. So 4 minus 1. Is this less than or equal to when you take this times 1 is 4n plus 3. I think super clear, so this is correct. Therefore, this right here converges by the alternating series test. Alright, number 2. 2 over 5 minus 3 over 8 plus 4 over 11 minus 5 over 14 and so on. Let's put this in the sigma form first. And start with 1 to infinity. Positive, negative, positive, negative, right? So we need negative 1 to the n minus 1 power. For the top, it is 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And because n starts with 1, so on the top is just n plus 1. Next, bottom, 5, 8, 11, 14. Each time it goes up by 3, it's arithmetic. The common difference 3 is the coefficient of n, so 3n. And when n is equal to 1, 3 times 1 is 3, we need to add 2 more in order to get to 5. Okay, cool. Now, check this out. This is alternating, so this right here is our bn. But if you look at it, as n goes to infinity, you care about n, you care about 3n, n over 3n is 1 third. So, this right here, bn does not give us 0. However, though, for the alternating series test, 
we are only using that for convergence. We cannot really say it diverges by the alternating series test. So this is how you do it. This time though, we are actually going to consider the whole thing. And if you do the whole thing and take the limit, as n goes to infinity of the whole thing. n plus 1 over 3 n plus 2. Well, in this case, as n goes to infinity, we still consider this and that. So it's 1 third. But if you consider this factor as well, it's going to be jumping in between of negative 1 third and positive 1 third because of this. Therefore, this limit right here actually doesn't exist, which is of course not equal to zero. Therefore, we can come here and say the series diverges, and the reason is because we are using the test for divergence, so TFD, because this, right, the limit of the whole thing, like this formula here, does not give us zero. So, okay, number three, this is our series. And as we can see, here we have the negative one raised to the n minus one part. So the rest right here is the bn. And let me just rewrite it to make it super clear for you guys. Negative one to the n minus one, and then n over n squared plus one. This is our bn. Now, let's go ahead and do the check. The first check is that we hope the limit as n goes to infinity of bn is equal to zero. And you can see that it's indeed equal to zero, right? But let me just uh, write down all the work for you guys. So n over n squared plus one. As n goes to infinity, of course, we care about this and compare with that n over n squared reduces to 1 over n. As n goes to infinity, we get 0. So yay. Now for part 2, we check if bn is a decreasing sequence. But I don't know yet, so put on a question mark. Alright, let's go ahead. n plus 1 into the n here and n here. So n plus 1 over n plus 1 and then square that, and then plus 1. Do we get this less than or equal to bn? And we want this to be true for n greater than or equal to 1, because n goes from 1 to infinity. So right here, I'm just going to do the algebra to work this out for you guys. Firstly, I will multiply this out, so we get n squared plus 2n, right? 2 times this and that, so it's 2, and don't forget about this term, this part. And then we add 1 squared, which is plus 1, and then plus this one. Alright, so I'm just going to multiply this and this, and then this and that. Everything's positive, so I just need to maintain the inequality and then see if it's uh, correct inequality or not. So this times this is n plus 1 times n squared plus 1. Is this less than or equal to, this is n, times n squared plus 2n, and of course plus 1 plus 1, that's plus 2 here. Yeah. Now, perhaps let's just work this out. n times n squared is n to the third power, and then n times that is plus n. But let's actually do it like this, 1 times n squared is n squared, and then n times 1 is plus n, and then 1 times 1 is plus 1. So, wow, it works out pretty nicely. <laughs> and then, is this less than or equal to distribute it? We get n to the third power plus 2n squared, and then plus 2n. Hmm. This inequality is not immediate, but you can still kind of cancel things out, right? For example, n to the third power, n to the second power, we subtract that from both sides, so they're out. And then we can minus n squared on both sides. So let me do that. And then minus n on both sides. Let me also do that. So this is out, this is out. 
and we are looking at 1. Is that less than or equal to this and that is n squared? This and that is plus n. Now, is this true? Don't forget we have this condition. n is bigger than or equal to 1. When you square that and you have one, one, more, one more n to it, for sure this is bigger than or equal to 1. So check. Therefore, we can come here and say this right here. Can purchase by a s t. All right. Last question. Here again, negative one to the n minus one. So let me put it aside. I'll write it down like this for you guys. So we have one over square root of two n plus one. Therefore, this right here is the bn. Now do the check. First thing, we see if the limit as n goes to infinity of bn. Yes, we are going to get zero, but let's write it down, right? So this is the limit as n goes to infinity of that. As n goes to infinity, two times infinity plus one, it's the infinity, and the square root of infinity is still infinity. 1 over infinity, yes. I think it's pretty clear that this is 0. Done. Now, secondly, we check if bn is a decreasing sequence. So we first put n plus 1 into this n. So we have 1 over square root of 2 times n plus 1, and then plus 1. Is this less than or equal to bn, which is that? Okay, and then again, for n greater than or equal to 1. So, work this out a little bit. This is 2n plus 2, and then plus 1. The denominator here is bigger than that, and they both have 1 on the top. So, of course, this is true. And if you would like, you can just do more algebra and then simplify it. The cross multiply. This times that is square root of 2n plus 1. And then this times that is just that, which is square root of 2n plus, plus 2 plus 1, which is plus 3. So of course, this right here is totally true. right? You can square both sides and get rid of the 2n, but this is just plus 1, this is plus 3. So of course, this is bigger. And square root is an increasing function, so for sure this is bigger. So this is clear. So we can come here and say this right here converges by alternating series test. So that's how I do it.